and welcome to the Oak and Lamb YouTube channel. My name is Becca Oaks. I'm an owner and craft educator here at Oak and Lamb. Today I am going to be using the Cricut Venture to create a fun project. We love the Cricut Venture around here. If you are not familiar with it, it's a pretty amazing machine that Cricut has put out this year and it cuts up to 24 inches in width. So it enables you to create really large projects. Most of you all have probably seen the yard stake, birthday wishes, congratulatory wishes, those types of things where you take a yard sign basically that has a letter on it and build words and phrases and also add complimentary graphics to it. So for instance, congratulations Rachel on your graduation and there would be like a graduation cap and a diploma and different things along with that. And it's just an excellent way to display a sentiment or congratulatory statement or something like that. So we're gonna be making them with the Cricut Venture. We can totally customize this using different fonts and different files, especially our files that we have here at Oak and Lamb. There are all different kinds that you can use for this particular type of project. I have purchased these metal or wire yard stakes from Amazon. Um, if you get 50, they're around a dollar a piece and they are reusable. So if I wanted to create this one for graduation, wanted to remove the letters or add to it later, um, if you, if you have a good um, collection of them, then you can use them and reword, um, add to, and, and use them for, for different holidays and different occasions. Um, but if you wanted to completely start over, you can just take them off and reuse the wire stake. So I do have some of those. I'm going to be using Scotch ATG Advanced Tape Glider, which is a double-sided dry adhesive. I can also use some wet adhesives like the Barely Art um, paper adhesive, which is really nice. And then we're going to be using poster board sized card stocks. So Cricut specifically has uh, different color combinations. You can get a neutral palette of their large card stocks. You can get a bright colored uh, primary color pack. They are pretty pricey though, I do have to point out. They're 24 by 28 um, and it's difficult to find sizes that exact size. So that is why we are using the Cricut, but you can also use poster boards um, and different sizes. We're gonna link some from Amazon, which are 22 by 28. So pretty similar, um, but you're just gonna have to make your letters a little bit smaller. So other than that, and maybe some other card stocks, like some accent colors or something like that. That's all we need for this project. So let's jump over into Design Space and look at what we are going to be making with the Venture. Okay, over in Design Space, the very first thing that I want to do is grab a basic shape, a square, and then I want to size it to the size of my poster board. So let's unlock that size lock ratio and make it 28 by 24. And this will kind of give us a representation of how big we want each letter. So if we want them super huge and wanna cut one letter out per board, you can absolutely do that. Or if you wanna to try to get two or three on here, then it's nice to have a representation of that so that you can place the letters on here and see if they will fit. Because I've already looked into this and kind of figured it out, my letters with the offset are gonna be about 18 inches tall. So I don't have to figure that out here. Um, but I am gonna be creating an offset on my letters just to help it pop and give it a little bit more stability. So we'll start with that. I'm gonna grab my text box and just type in happy 26th Rach, and I want to make sure that I choose a font that is nice and thick. So let's go grab my favorite retro font that's really popular. That's nice and big. The reason that I want a good thick font is so that it just is a sturdier uh, piece when it is cut out. So uh, you're, you're gonna have the stability with that thicker font and then you're also gonna be able to see it better if it's more bold. So just choose something that's nice and thick and then go ahead and create your offset. Now, one thing I will say, I feel like in the past when I've created offsets, then I was able to ungroup the offsets if the offsets were not touching, meaning if I create this offset, and my offset is not touching like this, 
then I feel like in the past I could ungroup it and then touch, like move each individual thing around. Unfortunately, I can't do that right now, which makes sizing these and placing them on different boards and things like that a little bit difficult. Um, so if you have a program like Illustrator or something like that, I found that it was easier to create this exact same thing in Illustrator and then bring it in like this so that I could separate those offsets individually. So Either way, it's totally acceptable. I'm going to delete this. And you'll see here also in, let me get it bigger here. I went ahead and contoured the centers of the offset so that it doesn't cut out the middle. That's just a personal preference uh, that I did. So let's go ahead with the offset and the letters selected. I'm going to make that 18 inches tall. 18 just like that. So these are pretty big. And then I'm going to ungroup. I want to go ahead and change the color of these. I'm going to make happy 26th all in blue. So I have just those selected. Go ahead and change them to blue. And then Rach and my exclamation point will be in orange. And th the way that I'm selecting this is I've clicked one and I'm holding in shift. Then I click the next one. Next one, next one, all while holding shift. And that just enables me to select um, more than one at a time. We'll make that orange. My offsets are going to be white, but I can just leave them black. It will be fine. I don't have to change it. And then one thing, I'm not going to do all of this on, on this video. It will be sped up because it would be a lot. But um, if I go ahead and click make it right now, then what it's going to do is place all of these on the mats organically. And look, we have so much space right here that's being wasted. Um, unfortunately, that's just the way that Design Space sees it. So what happens is Design Space sees your object as this rectangle right here being the cutout instead of this right here. When in reality, you could put like another A right here that would technically overlap right here, but it's not gonna cut into the A. So that's part of the problem. So you can get around that by manually placing these kind of like this. Let's see if I wanted to put this one with this one. So let's go here and I'm gonna click on this and press move object. And then I can select the mat that I want to put it on. And see, I can, I can place this like this. Then I'm going to be able to put more on here. Now, this becomes, you're just kind of moving back and forth and looking and seeing. Can't remember which mat is on which. And so what I like to do before I click this at all is come back over here and put my square here. And then start lining up my letters like this. Now I can rotate here and there, add them. And as long as they will fit right in here, it's going to work here as well. Now I can't just leave this like this and have design space, put it on a map. That's not what's going to happen. So what I have to do is select these and press attach. So I can press attach here or I can press option A, which is a hotkey. And then when I click make it, you can see it's going to cut it on the correct mat now. So just go back over into design space and attach your different letters together based off of what will fit on that blank shape. And um, you, I think I ended up cutting it down to like, I want to say like 11 mats instead of 16. So it, it's quite considerable. Um, but also I've added um, some other shapes. So let's, before we start cutting out, let's go ahead and back back and add our other shapes. Okay, so we're gonna use some oak and lamb cut files. I already have them uploaded here in Design Space. So the first thing I wanna look for is a balloon. And I know that we have a card that has some balloons on it. So let's go ahead and add the card to the canvas. And then I also want to do a cake. So let's go find a cake. This is the cut, the SVG version. Let's go back over to Design Space. And what I love about SVG specifically is that you are able to ungroup and use specific layers from SVGs. Um, so I don't have to use this whole file. I'm just going to ungroup, delete what I don't want, which is most of it. Um, I'm just going to take one balloon here and get rid of this. And then I want to size this to probably around 18 inches too. So it's about the same as the letters. And then I want four of these. So let's just go ahead and duplicate. I'm going to press Command D on my computer or, or on my 
keyboard to duplicate. And then with the birthday cake, let's make it 18 inches tall as well. There are so many layers here. So the cool thing about this is that I can cut all of this out individually if I wanted to make a super intricate cake, or I could select all of it, combine, weld, or unite so that the entire thing cuts out as one piece. Or this is what I did. I'm gonna have this right here. I'm gonna duplicate this. Now I'm gonna to go to combine and press undo unite. And then I'm going to cut out this, let's ungroup. The frosting will say it will be white. This cake is gonna be purple. Frosting will be white, candles, will be pink. So let's make those pink. And then I do want to unite those so that they cut out, out as one piece. And then these right here, our flames are going to be yellow. So let's unite those so that the stick kind of is still on there. Make that yellow. And then I can delete that. So you can use it in so many different ways. I'll be able to layer all of this with cardstock. It's gonna look really, really cute. And then I want two of these. So once I get one of them created, I'll just select everything, duplicate, and then we'll cut out another one. Now, if you wanted to create an offset on this, you could, I'm not, I'm just gonna cut it out as is without the offset. Um, but let's go ahead and click make it and get all of this cut out. So we'll be selecting on the mat, our 24 by 28 inch mat. We'll go ahead and press continue, connect to our venture, and then we'll be selecting the poster board material setting. Okay, so now that we have selected poster board as our material setting, we are going to be making sure that we have our fine point blade and clamp B, that our lever and rollers are in uh, position two, that the left and right guides are up, middle is down that we have our mat support button pushed, and then we're gonna insert our mat. And we're also going to put our mat support in, our extra mat support, because we are gonna be using the 24 by 28 inch mat. So we'll do that in just a second. So first and foremost, we will be putting our extra support guide in. So go ahead and put that together. It's really easy to do that. And then we're going to push our support guide right here. And then we will go ahead and install the extra one in the back where it goes. Now we'll go ahead and load our mat. Lower that lever and then insert the mat and press play. Start, go. Okay, we did a little bit of movie magic so that you didn't have to endure all of that cutting because I have to be honest, the venture cuts it really quickly. The longest is just removing the materials from the mat and placing the, the mat back on and loading and all that stuff. So if you have two mats, I would recommend while one is cutting, go ahead and prep the other mat with another board just so that it's more seamless. Um, cause like I said, that's really the longest part. The cuts were really quick. So with our ATG gun, I'm going to speed through all of this. I'm just going to put some adhesive on one side, place it on my offset for every single one of these. And then I went ahead and did the cakes. You could see the cute little flames with a, a fun glitter gold, pink candles, and then our white frosting look really cute. Our balloons look really cute. Once we get these on our offsets, we'll be able to attach them to our wire yardsticks. Okay, so one thing I do want to say, like these, like the exclamation point is smaller. And so if I put it on this, you're going to see the wire around it. So sometimes what you may need to do, and I, I honestly should have thought about it beforehand so that I could just combine the offsets together, um, but is combine this with the H, like the exclamation point is going to be at the end of this. So I can combine these two and just use one post for this. 
Okay, and then I'm just gonna use like a duct tape or masking tape or some sort of strong tape to go ahead and start taping these on here. Um, Rach is going to be in the front. Happy 26 will be in the back. So I'm going to put the happy and 26 toward the top of the uh, wire yardsticks and then the rach will be kind of toward the bottom um, just so that when it layers, it's, it's gonna be at different heights. I hope you enjoyed this video and this inspires you to create other large projects with your Cricut Venture. If there are any other projects like this that you would like to see, let us know by leaving a comment down below. If you want access to these cut files and other videos similar to this that are for members only, join the membership here at Oak and Lamb. Use the code YouTube, Y-O-U-T-U-B-E for a special discount on a monthly tiered membership. If you're not already a subscriber to the YouTube channel, go ahead and hit subscribe and like this video if you like it. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you here another day for another video.